Swift has different kinds of tasks with different implications when we look at Swift concurrency. We can have detached tasks to run in the background. We can have unstructured tasks that run somewhere. And honestly, how do we, how do we actually know where our functions run in Swift? My name is Donnie Walls. And in this video, we're going to explore exactly these topics. We're going to look at where our code runs when we write code with Swift concurrency. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through where unstructured and detached tasks run and also explain a little bit about what they are. We'll look at how we can reason about where functions run uh, because we can all do that. We can all look at code and say, this is gonna run there, this is gonna run there. And you'll learn about why that is and how we have all these compile time safety nets built into Swift that help us make sure that our code does exactly what we want it to do. Let's talk about tasks first. There's two kinds of tasks. One is unstructured and the other is detached. When we make a detached task, as you can see here, um, it always runs on a global executor. And that's a different way of saying it's going to run away from the main thread, right? And all we do is we call task.detached and we pass some body to a closure uh, that's shown here. And everything that's inside of that closure body is gonna be running on the global executor. Right, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that uh, because I feel like it's not the point of this video right now, but I do have some posts on my website where I talk more about tasks and how they work. Um, but in practice, when it comes to detached tasks, you'll actually hardly ever use them, right? Even though they allow you to run code away from the main thread, there are other ways to run code in the background that don't involve having to run a new task that does not participate in structured concurrency. Uh, it's not usually problematic to be using them, but it's just simply not needed, right? So you'll probably don't want to use them all the time. You want to see if there's something else in the language that you can use before reaching for a new task, especially when it's gonna be a detached task. So in addition to detached tasks, we have unstructured tasks and those look a little bit as, that, as follows. Uh, we have a task, we don't have any uh, static method that we call it. We just make a new instance of the task object and we pass it a closure. And that closure is going to run well somewhere. Can we reason about where it runs? We can. Um, even though detached task and unstructured task are created in a very similar way, um, the important part of having an unstructured task is that it, well, doesn't detach, right? So that means that it's going to inherit certain information from where it was created. And in this case, we're most interested in talking about which actor we created a task from. And we inherit an actor when we create an unstructured task. So if a, a current context, let's call it that, is associated with the main actor or isolated to the main actor, then we will inherit that. And sometimes it's quite obvious because we're being explicit, as you can see in the code that's on screen right now. Note that we could also do this with a detached task, by the way. We could put at main actor on a closure that we pass to a detached task and then run that closure on the main actor. I don't know why you would actually do that in a lot of cases. Maybe there's something specific there, but you could if you really wanted to. Um, and another way to make sure that our task run on the main actor is shown here, right? And this one is a little bit less obvious already. We have this view right here uh, called my view and it's annotated with the main actor. So that means that all of the members of this my view are going to be isolated to the main actor, including this function start task that you see on screen. So when we spawn a new task inside of that function, because we're explicitly isolated to the main actor, that task is gonna run on the main actor, even though that task itself doesn't have this annotation. All right, so that's pretty clear. And if we remove the main actor annotation from our view, now where does this task run? The code looks pretty much the same, but it's incredibly different at the same time because the view is no longer main actor isolated. And that means that the start task function also isn't main actor isolated. And as a result, the task that we spawn also isn't main actor isolated. No matter where we call this function from, this function itself is not isolated to the main actor. And that's what seems to matter here to Swift concurrency is, is the current context that we're in isolated to the main actor and not necessarily is the thing calling this function isolated to the main actor. And that's an enormous difference from what you might be used to in GCD. Uh, because in GCD, if you call a function from the main actor, you know that that function is gonna run on the main thread, right? Actors are different. 
And so concurrency is different. So if we want to verify this and actually test whether what I just said is true, we can use the main actor's assert isolated or precondition isolated to perform a runtime check for main actor isolation. You typically don't want to ship this kind of code, but it can be really helpful if you want to explore and sort of educate yourself on how all of this works. Um, we can simply call main actor .assert isolated and give it some text um, to make it clear where it has happened or something like that. Um, and if this task is ever started without being on the main actor, then our app is going to crash in development, which is kind of nice because that allows us to see whether this works as expected or not. Now notice that this should never change randomly, right? Everything in Swift Concurrency or almost everything is pretty much determined at compile time. So that means that if the compiler determines that this will run on a main thread, it will always run on the main actor, okay? So what's interested is that if you create a new task from an object that's not main actor annotated, then that object is never going to be main actor isolated. If you do want something to run on the main actor, you have to be explicit, right? So anytime you're not explicit and you're not annotating something with main actor, it is going to run in the background. So it's really important that you are very explicit in your intent to run on the main actor. What's nice is that the underlying system is going to make sure that we don't do any extra thread hops and that there's little to no performance cost to having nested main actor annotations. Right, if you're using GCD, then dispatching to the main queue does have a little bit of overhead. In Swift Concurrency, this overhead is vastly, vastly reduced. So it's really something you don't have to worry about. So that's enough about tasks and where they run. Let's talk a little bit about async functions. Because an async function in Swift needs to be called from an async context and it's called with a wait. Right, so if you're on the main thread, or on a main actor and you're awaiting an async function, it might sound like you're blocking the current actor or the main thread, uh, but you won't. And that's very, very important to realize because that's a fundamental thing about async await is that awaiting is not a blocking operation. It simply allows a task or an actor to make progress on something else while the async function that you called is doing whatever it needs to do. So keep that in, in your head. But how do we determine where the code that we're awaiting runs, right? I'm telling you now that it's not blocking your main actor, but how do you know? How can you look at a function and say, this is not going to block the main actor? Well, examine this example right here. We have this view struct, it's not main actor annotated, and we have this perform work async function. Now, can we determine where that function runs? If we dissect this function, we know that it's marked with async, and you might assume that it runs on the thread that we called it from, because that's how things work in GCD. But I more or less just told you already that it doesn't work like that. Because this async function runs elsewhere. And let's look at more examples before I get into the rules for that. So if, if you were to call that function like this, if you're still in your GCD mindset, you might think, oh, that's going to run on the main actor because I'm spotting a task on the main actor and I'm calling perform work on the main actor. And interestingly, that is not the case at all. An async function that's not isolated to the main actor will always run on the global executor. Just like how we spawn a task when we're not explicitly tied to the main actor, we can call a function or make a function async that is not specifically tied to the main actor and it will run in the background too. So notice how Simply marking a function as async makes it run in the background. And that's why I mentioned earlier that we don't need detached tasks a lot. A detached task is, is simply not needed if you can have a non-isolated async function uh, in a context that makes sense. Things can get a little bit tricky because I just changed the code and there's not a lot of difference here except that my view now has a main actor annotation. And that means that this async perform one function is now isolated to the main actor, which means that it's going to run its body on the main actor. If this function awaits something, then we have to look at the function that's being awaited inside of perform work to determine whether the thing we're waiting for will block the main actor, right? So every function in Swift Concurrency decides whether it runs on the main actor or not, or rather 
If it's not isolated to the main actor, an async function is always going to run on the global executor. So we're really always answering the question, is this specific function I'm looking at, the specific function I'm calling, isolated to an actor, yes or no? Rather than who's calling this function and where might they be calling it from, which is how we reason in GCD. And that's a very complicated way of reasoning because we can never know who's calling our functions and where they're calling them from. So being able to encode this information into our functions by either isolating them or not isolating them is very, very powerful. Because now we can just look for an annotation on the function first. Is the function main actor annotated? If yes, we know it's gonna run on the main actor. Then we can look at the enclosing type. Is that type main actor isolated? If yes, we know the function's gonna run on the main actor. And we can keep looking around for these kind of things where um, we want to see if there's anything that's going to isolate us to the main actor, yes or no. And if there's nothing isolating us to the main actor, then we know that we're gonna run in the background. Do note though that this can be a little bit tricky to look for because you might have a protocol that you're conforming to. That protocol could actually add a main actor annotation. An example of this is SwiftUI's uh, body variable. But overall, it is possible to determine at compile time by a developer even, whether a function is going to run in the global executor or not. And that is really powerful and a huge difference from how things work in GCD. So let's summarize. The rules for where your code runs in Swift Concurrency are pretty specific. If you're not isolated to the main actor or any actor, then you're gonna run on the global executor. If you're isolated to the main actor, you are going to run on the main actor executor, which is the main thread. Very clear and pretty consistent. There are some exceptions, which are actually bugs, right? And Apple's working on fixing these kinds of things, but the rules are simple. Although the isolation might not be applied super obviously. For example, if it's applied to an enclosing object, then things can get a little bit hairy, but still it is possible to figure this out and know where your function's gonna run. So much better than GCD. With that, I do want to ask you, how are you enjoying Swift Concurrency so far? And did you already know these rules? Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.